Welcome everybody to episode number thirty of the Vinyl Community Gunkles. This time around, 30. you know, we've been, we've been yeah thirty. It's celebration time. What is thirtieth anniversary? Is that cotton or paper or <laughs> paper is the first? Oh, uh, yes, record, or it's record. It's probably yes, it's vinyl. <laughs> So, yeah, mystery. that's what we're always talking about. And we've been doing this thing lately where we've been ripping off uh, As It Should Be channel and uh, doing be. our tops and bottoms we're for do a it particular again. years. And I think it's pretty uh, popular. People seem to be really... So we'll be doing this for a while because there's plenty of years. And the year that was drawn last time that we're doing this time is 1957. We'll also be reviewing the ASAP Rocky and... Uh, what's his name? Tobacco album they are together they are known as malibu ken we'll be reviewing that richard suggested that i want to make that that want to make that uh quite clear that that, that's richard's uh choice uh we are i am robert fithin along with uh richard from calvin wazoo uh craig from craig's vinyl plethora and mike from hub tunes i usually have something smart ass to say with one of those and i totally forgot to do that this time oh we can edit it in (laughs) Well, I think you covered it, you know, as you were yes. introducing that we were going to review Aesop Rocks. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was <laughs> smart enough. Yeah. All right. So who is first to talk about their tops of 1957? Wow, we're going way back to the beginning of way Rock and Roll. Yeah. Wow, yeah, we didn't order that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm on, I'm on, why don't I start? Because I'll go last with the album review. Yeah, that's okay. Good yeah. Okay. And then that way I can So you're putting your stuff that further apart. That say. doesn't make sense, but let's do it. Do it. <laughs> then I can steal everything Mike Pro is probably right. going to say. So um, for tops, what I decided to do uh, was to go and look at who were all the different musicians, you know, that may be performing now or are no longer with us that were born in 1957. Oh, and, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> because I knew you guys were going to be covering I singles. I think, you know, Robert and This Craig is why probably... I said we should just do 1960. To... Anyway. <laughs> so, and then there's a lot of jazz that was released in 1957. And just like you said, uh, I think it was last week. A lot of jazz, Robert... too. That's why these people were born in 1957. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, uh... A lot of jazz. But like you said last week, you know, when you go through the list of uh, albums that were released in 1957, you'll see like Miles Davis, three records. You'll see, um, you know, all these these play- Char- Charlie Mingus, three or four records. You know, people were cranking out records, you know, in, in one year. And like you said last week, nowadays, it's like one every two years or something like that. You know? Well, and that's jazz was like, you know, one of the one of the formats that were album oriented rock and yeah. roll is you know that was mostly yeah. unless you're elvis or something it was mostly those, those are all singles yeah. right so to go with the people born in 1957 uh starting at the year in february 25th 1957 was dennis dickin or dykin he's uh the drummer founding member one of the founding members of the smithereens so he was born in 1957 and he is still with us i like so. the smithereens uh, then, of course, we've got Cindy Wilson, B-52s. She was born on February 28th, so she was just popped out just in time before she became a uh, um, one of those leap year babies. Uh, then, in May, we have Sid Vicious was born May 10th, and unfortunately... Well, maybe, I don't know if it was unfortunate. It's always unfortunate when people die young, no matter who they are. He died in 1979, February 2nd. Uh, then we've got Maxie Jacks, who, uh, a vocalist. He was with the electronic band Faithless. And I happen to have this record that he yeah. did with uh, DJ Tiesto, which was for uh, an AIDS benefit, Dance for Life. Very cool. Yeah, that's a cool collection. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Gary Beers. He was the bass player in uh, in Excess. Was the bass. No, he's still alive. He's still alive. He was born June 22nd in uh, 1957. But she is no longer with us. And that is Polly Styrene. She was the lead singer with X-Ray Specs. She was born in yeah. July, July 3rd. In 1957, she died in 2011, so uh, 10, 11 years ago. 
Uh, Mark Almond. Soft sell. Doo, All right. Doo. He is still with us. And still he has alive. the same birthday as I do, July 9th. Except he was born in 1957, the year before me. Yeah. Now, this was interesting. That I didn't actually know this about Keith Levine. Yeah. He was one of the founding members of The Clash, and he was on this record. But then right at the same year, he went and jumped on uh, with uh, Public Image yep. and uh, went with them. So he appears, he's on this record, but no other Clash records. Yeah. And he just uh, passed away, I believe. Uh, Keith Levine, yeah, November. Yes, November 11th. He died in uh, 2022. Uh, Richie Ramone is one of the Ramones who is still around with us. Really? He was born... I thought they were all gone except for Marky. Uh, well, they did not have a uh, date of death listed for Richie, uh, at least where I was looking. But uh, it was August 11th. And then there was Gina Schock. She was born in uh, 1957. On August 31st, she was the drummer, is the drummer. She's still with us. Another drummer, John Moss. Ah, Culture ah. Club. He was born November, or excuse me, September, September 11th. Uh, he is the subject of the song Karma Chameleon. Yes. Ah. And then when the Pretenders lost uh, their uh, first guitar player, Robbie McIntosh joined them uh, with this one, this record here. So guitarist Robbie McIntosh, he was born October 25th. And then the last one I have is Phil Collin, the uh, a guitar the guitarist with Def Leppard. This is the only Def Leppard record I have. Probably, probably fine. the only one I need. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he oh, was born on December eighth. I like High and Dry. High and no, dry. I was gonna say High and Dry is. Yeah. So that's what I have for nineteen fifty seven. I know it's kind of a weenie move, but uh, there you go. It works. Mm -hmm. Have I told have I told my Def Leppard story on this uh, stream? <laughs> I don't know. I don't recall. I don't think so. Oh, really? I have a Def Leppard story. Have you guys? Oh, right. Tell us. So my, so my sister went to Iowa State in early '90s, and her roommate worked for Coors. And every time a band would come to you know Iowa State, she'd work the concerts. You know, and she's just she was a beer girl. You know, and. She was backstage for the Def Leppard concert, and she met Joe Elliott. They've been married for twenty five years. She lives in a castle uh -huh. in England. She lives in a castle in England. They 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 met. They fell in love, and they've been married. They got like three kids. Her name's Christine. Wow. This is your friend or uh, my sister's roommate? Oh, sister! I thought I was thinking your sister. My, I'm like, so you're Joe no, Elliott's my, brother in law, no, <laughs> and you just bring no, this my, up. My, sister, my sister's roommate from college. Wow. She she, um, she ended up marrying Joe Elliott, and this is after like I mean, this is probably it's definitely after the Pyromania tour. So I don't, I don't follow Duff Leopard, but yeah, they've been married. They got like three or four kids. They live in a castle somewhere in England. Wow. They've been, her name's Christine. They've been married forever. Yeah, so like they didn't really years. do anything after Pyromania for like four yeah. years, right? Until nah, I don't Hysteria? So. Yeah. yeah. They had a four-year, uh, uh, I guess, just touring, and then the guy yeah. lost his arm. But he New lost Year's his arm he, yeah, on New Year's Eve. Yeah. yeah. As uh, I referenced I in my was, Christmas was, video. <laughs> there was a horrible snowstorm in Chicago that night that he uh, on New Year's Eve when he uh, lost his arm. I remember walking in it for hours drunk. Oh. Okay. All right. That's uh, 1957. Who who was born in 1957? And we find out that uh, Mike is sort of related to Joe Elliott. We'll go with that. Yeah. That version. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what happened. If, 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 he's, if, he's, if he's watching. It's what we call a nothing-in-law. Because he's definitely watching. Yes. <laughs> he loves Gunkles. And uh, uh, Mike and I were the ones that stood up for high and dry, just in case he's watching. Uh, yeah, so uh, who's next? Are we going me? Okay, I guess. Yeah, is that great? Yes. Craig is next. Right. 
It's it it is it is I. It is I. Okay, so I have a few um, honorable mentions, of course, because I always have to have honorable mentions. And because you guys were doing like ten and twenty lists, like this yeah, last I got time, twenty. Uh, <laughs> I I did a top 10 because I've been following the rules of the top five, but this week I broke them. Rules, so, uh, <laughs> rules. Yeah, right? There were There's rules. not really a rules, but whatever. Okay, so my honorable mentions. Are these singles uh, or records? They're all singles. I, all right. I'm probably going to stick with singles because it's easier. Um, I had some other thoughts, but then I worked too much this week. So um, Fats, Domino, Blueberry Hill, Harry Belafonte, the Banana Boat song. Buddy Holiday, or Buddy Holiday, Buddy Holly with Every Day, Everly Brothers, Wake Up Little Susie, the McGuire Sisters with Sugar Time, Sugar in the Morning, Sugar in the Evening, uh, Sam Cooke, You Send Me, and Patty Page, Old Cape Cod. These were my Those were my, those are my, no, those are my honorable mentions. Oh, okay. So my top 10, at number 10, Jim Reeves with Am I Losing You? And um, later redone by Ronnie Millsap. I think so. Oh. Uh, Jim yeah. Reeves is, the, is where it's at. And, um, no, it's not. Yeah, Jim Reeves <laughs> is where it's at. I, like, I grew up oh. listening to my mother. Hey, mom, like, your mother. Are talking about Jim Reeves? <laughs> no, Jim Reeves, who he was like, <laughs> he died not too long after this. Right? He yeah, died. people think that yeah, he, he died, died in the plane crash with Patsy Cline. Um, because they took his rec- his voice and put it with Patsy Cline's voice and made an album with them together, both yeah. dead. Yeah. Um, very odd. And so they yeah. people think that they died in a plane crash together, but that's not true. No. He was not I in Patsy Cline's He was point. close to this year, though, when he died, though, right? Yeah, he died young. He died when he was popular. Yeah, he died very young. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Jim mm-hmm. Reeves and Am I Losing You. Um, at nine, Ruth Brown with Lucky Lips. I just love that song. Um, I always kiss my chips. I love and Ruth (laughs) Brown is just fabulous. And then later, John Waters used her in Hairspray as Motormouth Mabel. Uh Motormouth, Motormouth, Motormouth. I love me some Ruth Brown. She is so fantastic. That's right. Um, I forgot about that. She's so good. Yeah. Oh. Tally, the woman clutching her purse. I am <laughs> what? The woman walking through the, the ghetto neighborhood, clawing onto her purse. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I need to watch that again. It's so really? good. It's so good. And of course, the original, not the music. I mean, the musical's fun, but yeah, I've never no. seen it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so uh, number eight, Connie Francis. Who's sorry now? Number seven. Mm-hmm. Pat Boone, Love Letters in the Sand. This is this is all because of my parents. I just wanted to, mostly my mother. This is this is shit that like was played. Oh no disclaimers. Uh uh-uh. yeah. no, no, I would still love them. I would still love them, but obviously they all have like a sentimental thing to me because my mom I mean my parents were married in fifty four, so I mean like No, mine were married in fifty three. Yeah, so I mean, it's just kind of like this was like their 52. Jams, you know. Um, number six, Marty Robbins, a white sports coat and a pink carnation. Number five, Mr. Presley with Let Me Be Your Teddy Bear. Number four, Patsy Cline, Walking After Midnight. The original version, there are two versions of that song, and usually people know the second version from 1960 because that's the one that shows up on a lot of the MCA compilations right. but and actually the 57 one is a lot more country sounding and, it's and it has the jordan airs is back in vocal right no the jordan airs are the, are on the 60s one okay. that's uh, okay. produced with uh what's his name i'll have okay. to look at mine okay. to see which one it is yeah i so i prefer the earlier one i don't really like the one with jordan jordan airs but night winds whisper to me is sung differently um in either in both you know in each of those so that's an easy way to tell hmm. anyway <laughs> I, didn't I didn't i didn't know that i'm giving commentary i like it uh number three the everly brothers with bye bye love bye, bye. uh just another everly brothers i hear them and my mom loves that song is, yeah. Uh, they have so many wonderful songs. Everly Brothers were just the shit. But number two, one, two, three, look at Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, 
Oh, Miss Delete with the Bobettes. And that song was originally, it was written about their high school teacher. And it was about how ugly he was. And the uh, label made it, made them change it into a love song. A little bit of interest. Oh, well, that's a lot more appropriate. They should have, they should have. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, they were like right. young girls singing about their high school teacher being so hot and dreamy or whatever. But yeah, no, he was fat and ugly in the original version that the girls wrote. But, um, and number one, and I have a record to, sh- to show with my number one. It's a miracle. It's Jimmy Rogers with Honeycomb. 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 <laughs> Honeycomb. And so this, my mother, like, she, so way back before we could just go download a song or anything like that, where you had to search forever, my mom loved this song so much when it came out, and she would always talk about it. Jimmy Rogers and the song Honeycomb. And I went on a freaking adventure trying to find her. This was, I was out of high school, but early 20s, trying to find something that had that song on it for her. And I found this like compilation tape or something like that that had it on it. And later I found this, but um, yeah, I went on this great adventure trying to find that song for my mom because she loved it so much and had so many fond memories of it you know, when it came out. And so it was... I like yeah. the cereal. Well, I was going to say, there are two popular Jimmy Rogers, too. People get confused by that, too. There's the Jimmy mm-hmm. Rogers that you're talking about, who had another song called Secretly, right? Isn't he Secretly? Um, I think so, but also he did Kiss is Sweeter Than Wine. That was another Maybe one Secretly is somebody that. else that has a name that sounds similar. Oh. Anyway, that's like a gay anthem because it's all about having a love that you have to keep oh, secret. Anyway. Secret uh, off, look that up. Yeah, Secretly. And maybe it's not Jimmy Rogers, but there's two Jimmy Rogers. There's also the country, yeah, the country legend guy. Jimmy Rogers who spells his name differently. And that's who, uh, what, are, Atlanta Miles or whatever is talking about in that Black Velvet song. Um, but, um, it was by Jimmy guy. Rogers. Yes. Yeah. And, and he's for, like from the Carter has, family era. This has Puff the Magic Dragon on it for you, Fiffin. I love that. I love the idea of that song. I love the poem of well, that song. That maybe somebody else called. singing it, and it's not your friends. But, yes, and it also a, has the Banana Boat song on it. I didn't even read well, that. you can't win them all. Yeah, shut it. Cultural Next. appropriation way before it was hip. Wow. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah. They like coming me want to go home, you know, day oh day. Come on now. That guy's whiter than I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I um I did um cuz I don't have any bottoms for for 1957. What's yeah, we already established that you're a top exclusive. We have pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's, two episodes in a row. Okay, that's that's a straight on lie. Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to go through my birthdays, but uh, I'm not going to mention oh, the ones that Richard just left. Uh, Jesus. No. Uh, Nick Cave, also born in 1957. Yeah, I don't have any Nick uh, Cave. I need to get some. Yeah, yeah. Um, Donnie Osmond, born in 1957. Oh, I do. Uh, Peter Murphy from uh, Bauhaus and the great solo records. I actually like his solo records better than Bauhaus. Um, Holy smoke. And Susie Sue. Who was also born in 1957. Oh. Um, also, this is... Uh, I'm, I'm actually like an old car guy. I, I, I don't know where this comes from. I love old cars. I, I, it, like, if I could have an old car, like a 60s, you know, Chevette or uh, Chevelle or something, I, I would be all over it. Um, one of the you want rarest, a Chevette? Chevelle. One of the rarest Chevrolets was released in 1957. The Bel Air is the rarest uh, Chevy that you can buy, and they are worth a shitload of money if you get a really nice one. Um, So I also have jazz. I'll do the jazz and get it out of the way so Robert doesn't start itching himself because I know he's allergic to jazz. Uh, So There were some great jazz records released. Yeah, there was. 1957. I mean, I could have gone 10. I could have gone 15 deep, but I, I, I chose five. Um, John Coltrane's debut on uh, Prestige. Uh, probably my favorite John Coltrane record. I love this. I don't like his weird squeaky shit that he did later, 
love Supreme, whatever. I, it's not my thing. I like his more refined stuff, the prestige years, even the Atlantic years. I really like. Um, Soul Train uh, was also 57, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was the yeah. same year. A great, great record. Um, uh, Coleman Hawkins, a guy who doesn't get talked about very much in the jazz community. A great, great player. Uh, this is a mobile, mobile fidelity. And this is uh, the Hawk Flies High. Great, great record. Uh, and then one of the greatest jazz records of all time, uh, Saxophone Colossus, oh, Sonny yeah. Rollins. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. This is actually on blue vinyl, and it's cut by Kevin Gray, and it is awesome. It, and people don't, and you can get this for twenty two dollars. I, you don't have to go out and get a like hundred dollar record. This is an awesome. Oh no, yeah, yeah, it's really good. And then my um, my favorite jazz artist is Miles Davis, and uh, he released two spectacular records. Uh, he did uh, Walking. And this is, I love this artwork. I love this cover. This is a really, really cool record. And my, this is probably my second favorite. You'll love favorite. the Amy Grant Straight Ahead album cover as well. I don't like that. They got Grant, those on it too. It's got really? a big stoplight on it. And then this is, this is my second favorite Miles Davis record. I love this. This is a bag And yeah. I love this. Absolutely. Love this record. It's so damn good. And this sounds absolutely phenomenal. This is a Japanese press from, I don't know, probably the mid 80s. It's great. I, this is, uh, people don't talk, when they talk jazz and miles, I don't see this record get talked about. And I, I absolutely love it. And then I do have a rock and roll record. Amy Grant, album cover. There you go. Straight ahead. <laughs> I do have a, I do have a rock and roll record. And it's so good. It's on, actually on my turntable because the, uh, so, it's so good. I was playing it all afternoon. And this is the Chirpin' Crickets, uh, uh, Buddy Holly and the Crickets. And this is great. It would not fade away. And um, oh, boy. Uh, God, it's got so many great songs. This Actually, I think this has extra songs, this uh, reissue. But the Chirpin' Crickets, fantastic record. Just so good. That'll be the day. I, everything on here is great. So, yeah, that, did that's. I, did I read correctly somewhere that in Peggy Sue that it's not even Buddy Holly singing? Really? I don't know. No, I'm there, really There's some Peggy song that they did sure that, that he's he didn't even <clears throat> sing the studio track. Oh, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's not Peggy Sue. Um, yeah, definitely not Peggy Sue. But this is great. There's so many great songs on this. I, I love this record. And that's it. I don't have much for 57. I don't know. Well, I have 20, so right. I'll make oh. up for it. I have 15, me, uh, 15, me, uh, me you know. Pour some more beer. What's it? Yeah, and I'm actually drinking this time, too. I know when I'm good. It, but my, good on you. That sucks. I'm always by myself. Um, what are they called? Uh, not runners up, but uh, my honorable mentions. I got 15 honorable mentions in the top five. So the 15 honorable mentions uh, stood up. Broken Hearted, again, from Ricky Nelson. A uh, oh. whole lot of shaking going on from Jerry Lee Lewis. Searching from the Coasters. I've been searching. Everybody was, yeah, everybody's remade Searching. Uh, 20 Flight Rock from Eddie Cochran. When he reaches the top, he's just too pooped to pop. A lot of stations would not play that. Uh, Billy Lee Riley, my girl is red hot. Your gal ain't doodly squat. A lot of stations wouldn't play that either because it says doodly squat. And back then, people knew what you're not getting squat. People knew what the word squat referred to. So it was actually not a nice phrase. Marty Robbins, a white sport coat and a pink carnation, dressed up for the prom, ready to go, and gets stood up basically just like Ricky Nelson. He's there in his prom clothes and now he's in a blue, blue mood. I uh, went to my high my high school prom was kind of like that. Um, I tell this before, like my prom date was actually a girl that was going to go because this is this is the olden times back in the '90s where you know it was a boy and a girl going to prom and that's all it was. You could you couldn't take a pack of friends to the prom in my school. It had no, to be no. a date. It had to be a boy and a girl. So this girl was going to go to prom with her boyfriend. Her boy and, and had her dress all picked out and all this stuff and then her boyfriend's like or, i'm sorry her friend her her guy friend who her friend who was a guy she's all got her and they're gonna go and then all of a sudden he gets a girlfriend oh. let's take the girlfriend to prom oh. and she's like what so i took her to prom 
because I was originally not going to go because I was in my punk rock thing, and punk well, rockers don't go to, to the, the prom. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my prom day. She ended up sitting. That on could one be side a song. Room. Punk rockers don't go to prom. Uh, Don Woody, you're barking oh, yeah. up the wrong tree, complete with uh, the guy barking like a dog. Can't uh, beat that. Also, uh, let's see, Ruth Brown, as aforementioned, uh, Lucky Lips. I always kiss my chips because I know I've got a winner because I've got Lucky Lips. Uh, Fats Domino, <laughs> Blueberry Hill. Did I pull a fat, Fats? I didn't pull my Fats Domino album. Anyway, Fats Domino, Blueberry Hill, found my thrill. Uh, Tiny Topsy, oh, shucks, baby. I'm in love, the Everly Brothers, uh, with Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye Love, Bye Bye Happiness. Hello, loneliness. Uh, Buddy Holly is a tie. What is this? I was saying hi. Oh, I thought you were going like that. Buddy Holly's a tie because (laughs) it's a double A side. Now, a lot of the reissued 45s have hits on both sides, but the original version of this 45 is both hits. Peggy Sue is on one side, and uh, Every Day is on the other side, and that just happens to be my two favorite Buddy Holly songs, and they're on the same... 45 so every day it's every day closer, going faster uh jerry lee lewis great balls of fire and uh my Did final Danny uh, Kerwin do a cover of that song what happened of that buddy holly song danny oh, from yeah. the different strokes no uh, little Kerwin Rich- from fleetwood mac little richard oh, with my exclusive limited to 500 copies tutti fruity color vinyl oh. uh, little richard with jenny jenny is my final uh Honorable mention. Jenny, so that Jenny. just leaves the top five. Jenny, Jenny, spin it like a spin at top. Jenny, Jenny, woo, Jenny, Jenny. Okay, so the top five. Here we go at number five. I'm walking from Fats Domino. Really should have pulled the Fats Domino record. At number four, Smiley Lewis with Shame, 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 Miss Roxy. Uh, at uh, number three is Elvis Presley with Jailhouse Rock. Make sure you get the Elvis Golden, Golden Records with Elvis Golden Records in blue. That way you know you have a, a uh, early copy of that. It later changed to white. He, ca- I thought he came out with all kinds of 45s in the fi- in 57, but he really only did like four, four or five. Wasn't a Let lot. Me Be Your Teddy Bear and All Shook Up were also there. They're okay, but they do not compare to uh, Jailhouse Rock. Um, I did not get these from my parents or anybody, by the way, or radio. What what happened with me with these oldies like this was garage sales. Uh, you get a somebody would be selling a whole box of forty fives, and as a little kid, I would get those, and that's how I would pick out my favorites. Was these you know forty fives, and I had like two two spindles of forty fives when it was all said and done. And uh, Jailhouse Rock, the first song I ever heard that mentions Illinois in the lyrics, so I was all about that. At number two, the aforementioned Little Richard. Keep knocking, keep unknocking, but you can't come in. Come back tomorrow night and try it again. Now, all of those compare or uh, pale to, can't compare to the number one song of 1957, according to me. And by the way, these are all, ro- I did rock and roll songs. I should have mentioned that before. I just did rock and roll stuff. I didn't do any like Harry Belafonte or Patti Page or Frank Sinatra or anything like that. These are all rock and roll 45s. I imagine if I had. A bigger house. What I always wanted to have was a second jukebox that was more like a Wurlitzer, full of like fifties. These, these, I would want all these forty fives in there. I wouldn't necessarily want the, you know, Jim Reeves or whatever. At number one, the best song of nineteen fifty seven is Danny and the Juniors, "At the Hop." Yeah. What an incredible forty five, yeah. rock and roll forty five. Ah, uh, ba 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 at the hop. You can rock and you can move and you can really start to groove at the hop. Where the music is cool, saying the jockey is smooth, it's at the hop. All the cats and chicks going to get their kicks at the hop. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to the hop. Is somebody going to take over? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do the whole song. Well, there um, so, go. yeah, there's the top. Yeah, there it is. My top rock and roll 45s as I show LPs. I, figured that I don't have it. any bottoms, really, other than there's I one person know. from the 50s that I just despise. And it's not even a person related to music so oh well okay that makes that's a good topic <laughs> <laughs> For this so video. you know i don't know that's roy Cohn. Uh, yeah that's what that's what i thought you were talking oh with about. his yeah. little bags yeah. hanging off his yeah <laughs> the you know um i mean what a sleaze bag he he, he represented Absolute roger scum. stone in a pedophile case he represented uh 
Donald Trump. And well, that I mean, for this of... channel, I think the the thing to say is that he was a gay guy. Yes, he was a closeted who, uh, gay guy. Who was yep. closeted and you know very what anti. Stone said about that. He uh, said he said that um, Cohen is not gay. He just likes really cute, handsome boys. But he's a manly man. Gays are all frilly and feminine and sickening. You know, and then uh, Roger Stone, you know, what's he doing? He gets, he gets uh, Mr. Cohn to represent him in, a, in, I guess, a pedophile sex ring. Yeah, um, but then, of course, his big famous thing was with Joseph McCarthy. <laughs> so, uh, of being, uh, you know, he was the attorney that worked with Joe McCarthy during the uh, Red Scare and the Lavender Scare. He was big, uh, bigly involved in the Lavender Scare. But then, you know, he died of AIDS in uh, 19, what was it, 1980-something. Early 80s. Uh, 1986. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And he still denied that he was HIV positive before he died. Oh. Okay, um, Craig, do you have... <laughs> <laughs> <I'm really> <laughs> Thumbs down I... for Roy Cohn. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I didn't find a lot that I didn't. Um, there were some strange things. Um, what was that song? The yeah. Flying Saucer song? No, I can't find my little note now. Wow, the bottoms of 57 are going <laughs> yeah, they're swimming. Not, um, the bottom is falling there's, out. There's like, I mean, I don't really care for... Johnny Mathis's chances are. I don't know that I would say I hate the song on its bottom. It's just it's annoying. Well, as um, long as we're ripping off as it should be, we could say Crystal's line, which I think she's got the greatest line. I'll turn it down, but I won't turn it off. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to use the that song, sometimes. The song that was like again, I don't hate it, but I short fat fanny. Yeah. By Larry Larry Williams. Larry Williams. Yeah, short. I'd never heard that before. I listened to it. It was fun, but I was just like, mm, I don't know that anybody could sing a short, fat Fanny song. Well, she's now. mentioned in the Jimmy Barnes uh, in excess song "Good Times" from the Lost Boys soundtrack. Short, fat Fanny's going to be there too. Oh, she is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So she gets mentioned in a few songs. Oh, and then Does... there's all these teenage, you know, crush songs, and yeah, you know. I mean, it's really, there's nothing that I hate, but... Yeah. I think the stuff that we would... It's it's similar to 67, but even more of an extreme. The stuff that we would have hated didn't survive, so we never heard right. it. Right, yeah. You know, that's right. the kind of... The, the, that's right. the thing there. Okay, yeah, does I, Mike have any bottoms? I, He's a top no. exclusive. Yeah, top exclusive. Top exclusive. Um, <laughs> I just have... I have <laughs> 10 bottoms. Oh, Good. So uh, uh, these are, uh, okay, so we have um, Pat Boone with Love Letters in the Sand. Also, Remember Your Mine from Pat Boone in there as well. You love Pat Boone, apparently. We have Bernadine. Speaking of, speaking of from, bottoms. Uh, Bernadine is done by um, Pat Boone. <laughs> um, uh, also, we have uh, Pat Boone is on this list as well with April Love. And a song called Why Baby Why, and that was actually done by Pat Boone. <laughs> so those are my, uh, those are five. And the other five, to make a uh, long joke short, anything by Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. I fucking cannot stand Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. It wasn't from 57, but that goddamn Why Do Fools Fall in Love? That oh, was one yeah. of the first oh, yeah. songs I did not like. I remember not liking that song as a little kid. It was one of the first songs I hated. And then to find out later on in life that Frankie Lyman was a complete jack-off, it was like, oh. yes, somebody that I don't like anyway that's, you know, an awful sweet. person. So right. I cannot stand Frankie Lyman and the Teen. I think they had some bullshit song called Goody Goody or something this year. A couple other singles that didn't have any hits. That is something where I will not only turn it down, I will turn it off, I will call the radio station, I will drive there, pull the song out of rotation. I cannot stand Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. I think I didn't like him because, first of all, that Why Do Fools Fall In Love song is awful. But I think it was like he was a little kid. And a little kid doesn't oh, want to hear a little kid yeah. singing. 
Right. So yeah, right. Frankie Lyman like, and teenagers. If you've ever seen the movie about his life, he's a piece of shit or was. What was that dogs pathetic the song shit. that Pat Boone did that was like his attempt at rock and roll? Well, yeah, there were a couple, but I think the, the big one was the 80s. "Ain't That a Shame," where he complained because he wanted to sing "Isn't That a Shame." Oh. No, and then he comes back later on in an interview and says, well, if it wasn't for me, Fats Domino and Little Richard and Chuck Berry would have never been popular because I made those songs popular because they weren't allowed to play the black versions. On the... It's like, dude, sh- just wow. just, right um, it. just go sit down. No, you gave us he... Debbie Boone. That was, that was enough. You've done enough. Sit down. I, no, he did, come, he did come back in like the early 80s. And I remember an album that, and he was like all in leather on the cover. Right, yeah, that was the yeah, 90s. Yeah, or, yeah they, he did all these rock covers. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. I'm pretty that sure he 19, covered Nirvana. Uh, it was 1998 or so. And it was called Pat Boone and oh, Metal that's it, Mood. That's it. No yeah, more Mr. Nice it. Guy. And if you'll notice the, the promotional sticker, I did not pay for this. He does um, <laughs> Panama from Van Halen, No More Mr. Nice Guy, Alice Cooper. He does uh, Holy Diver from Dio, Paradise City, Guns N' Roses, Crazy Train from Ozzy. Uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock oh and roll. Yeah, have got another thing coming. He did Awful. two. He did two of those albums. Awful. Wow. Because he also wow. covered Nirvana. Well, yeah, that's he did ridiculous. Like Spira, yeah. I will. And just, fucking I'm just saying, well, I'm sorry. I love me some love letters in the sand. Oh my god, that's something to be whispered, not shouted. <laughs> I'm not gonna whisper. No, it's I'm I ever learned how to play on the organ, and my mom whisper. would sing it. So again, this is all mom-related shit. So last week, have, well, well, that's what I said. Mine is all out. organically my own 45s yeah, and, and, and choosing it. and picking as a little kid. Last <laughs> week, when I talked about how don't like this one. We used to mock Engelbert Humperdinck. Uh, we mocked Pat Boone as well. Yeah. You know, when I was nine and ten years old, we we uh, my friends, we just we mocked the hell out of him. It was just such a joke. Well, that's what he's there for. He's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so that went by actually kind of quickly with nobody really contributing to Bob. Uh, <laughs> you you, you did great. a good job. You're well, you're right. your bottom. There was so much variety. On your bottom list, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Yes, well, it's very concise. Um, <clears throat> it's very targeted. Speaking of quickly, some of our videos have been running kind of long with this year-long segment and doing an album review. So we had this idea that we would split them and start doing two videos, one with just the year in review, the tops and bottoms, and then make the album review a separate video. And we'd like to know in the comment section if you think that would be a good idea, if you would like that. Um, so that way you have two shorter videos and uh, they're a little more, you know, centered on individual, you know, the different yeah. topics. Like this video, we're going to review some rap album from Richard. <laughs> and that doesn't really go, obviously, with 1957. It's beautiful. So it's That's two completely different topics. So would that make, would that be better as two separate videos? Leave us a comment in the comment section and, uh, you know, would that be better for people? Or would you rather just have them in one long, uh, you know, hour and a half long video? Which this one won't even be an hour and a half long, uh, I don't no. think. So but we just did we just did forty minutes on nineteen fifty seven. Nineteen fifty seven. So if we did yeah. like nineteen, you know, eighty five, we'd still be talking. Yeah. We'd be halfway through the tops I mean, by now. Like yeah, yeah. Hundred years. So some um, years are going to be shorter than others. Absolutely. So what's yeah. next year? Yeah, Craig yeah, has drawn it. It might be a three hour long video with y'all. Oh, shit. Nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. When, when yeah. 19, when was it? 78? 78. 78. Oh. Yeah, we can do a whole, we can do I could do my favorite now. Kiss songs from 1978, and it would be a top 20 or something. I mean, come on now. Uh. Double, double platinum album. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's, so we thought we'd start doing double videos, and then, you know, one would be released on, like, Saturday or Sunday, the other one would be around Wednesday or something like that, so a little more, uh little little easier digestible i guess or maybe not yeah. let us know in the comment yeah. section if you like what we do right now and speaking yeah. of comments thank you for everybody that has uh, entered our contest that we were doing for the 40 dollars yeah. amazon gift card that has now expired yep. uh, okay. we don't know when you're watching this but it uh, when you know we're doing it when it was first uploaded it's going to have just expired so we did get a lot of entries and we're going to spend this week 
I mean, some of us have already been listening to the albums, right, that yeah, you've suggested, right. but we're going to spend this week yeah. really delving more into those. And uh, I'm going to do even some of the ones, some people even said ones we'd hate. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I got, somebody suggested the laws for me. I'm assuming that was a hate one. Good job there. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. We'll be talking about that and we'll be drawing the winner uh, next week. And they get a forty dollar, and it doesn't matter what how how on target you were with your suggestions. We're just drawing a name out of a hat, and uh, yeah, they will yeah, get a forty dollar yeah. Amazon gift card. So thank you again to everybody who entered our contest. Yes, yes. a lot of and, great entries. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, and I and, and a I discovered people who did their very first videos ever. Yep. Yeah, we inspired uh, Marsha P was one of those people, and BB yeah. also. I don't think it was her first video, yeah. but she rarely does videos, so so it's great to see people uh, doing a video that don't usually do videos. Yeah, I did one especially for us. Yeah. Okay. Who's okay. <laughs> <laughs> first on Malibu can? I would say it's ASAP Rocky and Tobacco, and together they're known as Malibu Ken. Yeah. Okay, it's not as soon as possible ASAP. It's, you know, ESOP. ESOP rocks. Oh, ESOP. Oh, that's right. It's with an O. It's A-E-S-O-P. Yeah, ESOP. Yeah. So, but yeah, this is, uh, so you guys decide who's going to go first with this lovely record. That it has covers. all kinds of very cool stuff, you know, with the inserts, etc. Can I go first? Go yeah. first. Go first. <laughs> I don't know why I want to go first. But I just, Everybody I take a know. drink every time he says wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. It's, Shots. Okay. Um, we love you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely not in my wheelhouse. There, he, uh, there it is. So, um, so we, we've been doing these uh, reviews. What, I think we started this at the beginning. Episode 30. Yeah. I think yeah. we did it from the very yeah, first episode, didn't we? 30 yeah. records. It's hard to believe. Um, this is the first one I couldn't get all the way through. I, 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 I tried really, really hard. Um, I'm not... I, I, do, I, I do like rap and a little bit of hip-hop. I, I've seen... I've seen Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> That's about it. And uh, I, I, and they're they're great. I love what they do, and, and that's the great thing about hip hop and rap. Every everybody's different. Everybody's just got their own little niche. And but man, this this did not resonate with me at all. I, I do like the I, I like the music. I, I really like the music, but I couldn't get to enjoy the music because of his vocal stylings, and I, I just. <laughs> did not work for me i um i i I like the best thing about this is really the artwork (laughs) which is so which is so bizarre it's so bizarre but i like i like the artwork um so i I actually um so i I listened to it Uh, one day i was driving and i got i got like five songs and i i i I couldn't I, i just i tried i tried and i couldn't listen to it and so i sent Corey a text and i said hey because <laughs> he loves hip hop and he loves rap, it's just kind of his, it's in his wheelhouse. And <laughs> I said, I said, I I need to review this album on Saturday. What do you think? Do you are you familiar with it? You know, is, tell me what you think. And he he, go, he goes, I've never heard of it. And I said, Well, just listen to it and just give me a little feedback. What you might think, you know, because I know what I think. And <laughs> I came home yesterday or the day before, and he looks at me and goes. Hey, I tried listening to that record. And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "He's like, "Man, that is awful." I said, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. He's like he's like I, he's like I couldn't get th- he couldn't get through it either. He listened to like four or five songs and he's just like, "I don't know who those people are." I, he's like, I, "It's just not in his wheelhouse." And yeah, Awful. I, I did not like it, and I, you know, I'm t- I, I'm tolerant of a lot of hip hop and stuff, you know, but I don't know. Something about this one just did not work for me, and I, I appreciate you challenging us because you know we all need that, and I think that's great. That's why we do these album reviews. And I don't know about all that, but this one, <laughs> no, 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 it is, it is, you know, and I, but it just, uh, it did not resonate with me at all, and it doesn't make it bad. Um, so. <laughs> It's just, yeah. 
uh, I, I mean, I hate giving it two rainbows. Two? Sure what would you give? You couldn't even make it through it. What would you yeah, give one would you rainbow? Be honest. Be honest no, because it's not my, just because it's not what I like doesn't mean it's bad. But that's not the point. You're supposed to review <laughs> it based on your reaction to it, not... I just want know, to know what would get no, one rainbow. What is the one rainbow for? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll give Somebody it. that's done time for, you know, <laughs> stabbing infants or something. <laughs> Reserving the one rainbow for that. Yeah, I just hate, like, shitting on Blank stuff. takes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take it personal, and I'm sure he's no, not going to take it personal. No, and none of us take any of this personal. No, I, I, I just, I, I'm going to give it two rain. I'm going to give it two rainbows because I really like music behind him. That's I, tobacco. I really do. That's tobacco. It's very interesting stuff, and and so I'm gonna give it two. I almost gave it three, but now you've talked me into two. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I couldn't make it through the album Three Rainbows. No, because I like I like the I like his music. I like what's going on behind him. But man, his vocal styling just fucking. Well, what you like, do is you listen to it with headphones, and you unplug the headphones halfway, and what that'll do is reverse the phrasing, and it'll eliminate the vocal. Um. I'm, also, I'm also deaf in one ear already, so it probably would eliminate it on all, all over the phone. I don't know. I, I, I tried. But you can only not. do that with the Beatles early stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> move on. I'm going to drink. Because it's not in your wheelhouse. That only works with Mike saying that, and I noticed I was the only one that drank last time he said that. I, I, I He said, what's his heads? We all drank. Didn't we? three three times you missed oh he said it three times yeah, no, oh i missed the third I, time yeah I, mean, I, I was like last in wine i obviously i've been drinking what he was next yeah. god i was sweating that oh come on don't be shy all right fine um Gregory. Tuesday, it's Tuesday. Is it too? Oh my lord, <laughs> Richard. Um, now, I know of Aesop, um, because you know, he he is one of those rappers I feel belongs well, not even belongs, but is okay if he's doing a little snippet in the middle of a pop song, like. You know, he was on a Selena Gomez song. That's kind of where he belongs. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday. I have a really big issue with one plus one equals 13 because it doesn't. I didn't even listen. I listened to the song, but I didn't. One plus one does not equal 13. I'm really bad with math, but I'm not that bad. And so it bothered me. I couldn't. Anyways, um. The music was really cool-ish. Um, it's appropriate that the guy's name is Tobacco because Aesop sounds like he's smoked more cigarettes than I ever have. Um, I don't know. I don't hate this, but I don't love it. Um, I, mean, I, did like a three. I, I did listen to it twice, though. I gave it... I, I mean, did, too. Yeah, I well, listened to it that, twice get- I wanted to be honest and i was hoping because you know i like hip-hop music i mean I'm, i i like it all but um i was i was like am i gonna find a treasure in this and i never found a treasure and so i was i'm sorry richard i i found no treasures in in this but and i think the album cover is creepy he look yeah. he needs some clear cell or some, i don't know what <laughs> it's just, I like you know, it. Yeah, I just I mean, look, look at that. Ah, that's, look at that. That's great. So cool. look at the green uh, stuff coming out of his nose. Yeah, yeah just, no, that's it's awesome. Not when not you stream cool. it on TV too. It shows a couple of the videos, and one of the videos is Cheese Monster comes in, and it's all oh. like looking like that, and looking like yeah. I didn't, see, I didn't see. I was gonna go watch a video, but um, and they're both white boys, right? No. Aesop Rocky is. He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's a very he's affluent, too. comes from an affluent family, went to university, is like, yeah. dad was he's like, like a, a professor. It's, yeah, like a it's, that, it's that thing. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Um, right. Exact, that's the face. Exactly. 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 So, um, <laughs> it's about as yeah, street as AstroTurf. 
on a Tuesday. <laughs> and so, um, Tuesday. And, um, yeah. One. is oh, the longest shit. number. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be hateful. but I'm not hateful. I love Richard. <laughs> I don't love this record. But I love Richard. I love Richard. Not liking yeah, I'm just not really uh, that impressed because most people could flow with a rhyme and a verse. The secret is to write the second line first. Rap should be political, lyrical, maybe just fun. With this album's boxes, I'm checking none. Was it made for a kid that just grew his first crotch hair? This album revs in neutral and just goes nowhere. Malibu Kin's spitting game is really just a cough. Jump at Barbie's pink vet and drive the fuck off. Fake elation, masturbation, self-congratulation, no sensation, just a lack of imagination. Doo-wop came and went disco just a few years. Hair rock was just a phase, but with rap, we're still here. It's like rap somehow is frozen in time when all that it is is the ability to rhyme not as cutting edge as it pretends to be this shit's been around for nearly half a century i'd circumvent the time i spent catch it ain't worth a cent my rage ain't pen i'm gonna vent my mind ain't blown not a dent if we keep uh, if we gotta keep hearing records that are just bull maybe this segment should be like what record would you pull halted vaulted call it a day and done we can always say well it had a good run now if we're all older we've been around for a while so let me kick it to you classic hip-hop style because i'm the r to the o to the b to the e to the r to the t and the place i'd rather be is with mike at a festival on jazz day it might not be my thing but at least they can play i'd rather hear craig's 90s alternative pop than this upper middle class rehash hip-hop didn't know i could rap well now you know i give this shit one rainbow i feel so sweet wow now. that took a lot of uh, <laughs> how long did Jesus. it take you to write that and like i five felt minutes. bad about giving it two rainbows <laughs> you know, i think i might give it four rainbows at this point wow oh, okay well are you are you, mean... are you okay robert yeah Oh my God! <laughs> oh, Richard, I, I'm a little stunned. <laughs> well, Richard, you didn't see that coming, did you? Is that, uh, <laughs> In the comments record, below, would you like to see my rap video I did? <laughs> when this record was released in uh, January of uh, 2019, um, I thought it was going to be probably the best new release of the year. Um, I thought this was an incredible album. I thought the lyrics were super insightful, um, especially some of the lines like, you know, uh, the world leaders uh, blowing on dice. Um, and then the, uh, the idea of, you know, one of these days we're going to make these billionaires pay. Um, and then some of the mon mundanity, like on Tuesday, Tuesday. You know, because he gets this Tuesday. call from somebody who's, freaking out because there's a mushroom growing inside his car. Um, he's, he's, he said in other places that, um, especially with like the song Corn Maze, which is the opening track, that um, he does reveal in that song his antisocial tendencies. But part of the reason he has these antisocial tendencies is because he views the world as being really fucked up. And he just doesn't want to be a part of it. Um, and that kind of goes through with a lot of these uh, songs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to defend it um, no, against no. Uh, these because, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I don't I, I even need that. I think there's some brilliant uh, rhymes going on in here. Um, it's uh, one of the things that he uh, – I found a quote by him where he says um, – because he does divide people. Uh, his real name is, uh, what is it again? Babbitts is the last name. Thurston Babbitts the fourth. Ian Matthew <laughs> Babbitts. Um, so, uh, but what he said, um, the, his, his uh, and he's got a bunch of records out, and uh, he has said that his music tends to divide people. Either people uh, dismiss his lines as being verbose and nonsensical and and and, and un difficult to understand um and then others uh are uh, think express it as being more that they're complex and intricate and enjoy it um he says um he recognizes it's probably not the most accessible music in the world it may pose a slight challenge 
to the listener beyond your average pop song. I'm no genius by a long shot, but these songs are not nonsensical. That's pretty preposterous. I'd have to be a genius to pull this many nonsensical records over people's eyes. Um, so he he does mix a lot of um, his his personal feelings with the world in terms of his observations of the world. I love the record. I think it is a brilliant record. Um, it is, a, I tend to, I like, for a long time, ever since probably NWA and maybe Public Enemy, I liked uh, those records when they came out. But then for such a long time, hip hop was really just a bunch of songs degrading women and, you know, just really glorifying um, uh, excess uh, of, of just, just stupid excess, in my opinion. But then there were a few that did come out that uh, I uh, that I liked. And his was one of the first ones I heard in a super, super long time. I even like it better than uh, uh, that uh, one that came out, uh, was it last year, Madla? Uh, um, oh, the co collaboration with Madlib, and, uh, yeah. um, which is really good as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to give it five rainbows because I think it is a brilliant album. Um, I, and I think the lyrics are funny and insightful. And, and the way he paints these pictures with his words about what's going on around him, um, I think he does it with great skill. But that's just my take on it. Well, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's all in the artistry, you know, just because I don't like it or, you know. It, well, I don't well, that's, apologize that, that's, that's for the fact that you hate it, that's what okay? Artists that's do, fine. You know? yeah, I mean, there's exactly. shit that I hate that other people really oh, love. And I'm and, not going to apologize for the fact that I hate yeah, one, yeah. one of, how do I, where do I do that? There we go. I hate <laughs> one of his favorite bands. Yeah. It doesn't make it bad. Yeah, no. No. It, it, no. It's, you, know, you hate the Beatles? You hate the Beatles. Hate the Beatles. <laughs> um, Richard no, and, hates and, and the that's, Beatles. That's Let it go. That, that's exactly what it's all about. The, the fact that this artist can get a record contract and put his art out there on his canvas. And whoever likes it, likes it, and buys it, and loves it. And if you don't, you don't, you, you know, don't love it. You don't love yeah. It. yeah. And I, I think it's great, you know, and that's what, that's why we love music. And that's why we make these silly videos and we talk about it. Yeah, it and I whoever wants great. to watch the videos can watch them and whoever can watch it. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> comments, leave exactly. your comments, you know? you, oh my God. Please, well, if, you, if God. anybody else re echoes that thing about it being too challenging, that's, I don't, yeah. Okay. I was not challenged. My whole take is it's, the, it's kind of the opposite of that. Since I, I do all this stuff for work with assembling music beds, and basically you're just rhyming. Um, like, I can't sing like, you know, whoever, like, you know, David Gilmore or like, Al Green like or whatever. Right. I can't, you know, play an instrument like whatever, but I can do this stuff. So it's, it doesn't impress me is, is kind of where I come from with all that stuff. I mean, it, it, in order to impress me with like a rap thing, you, you better be like Tupac Shakur or somebody and just be like brilliant. That's my whole and, and hip hop's been around for so long so now. Long. It's oh, incredible to me. Late seventies. That right. Well, I mean, well, they when it started in the eighties, it was kind of the A B. You know, I'm blah 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 blah, and I'm here to say that you know I'm on the mic. And but as far as progressive rap, that's that started in pretty much the oh, yeah. mid nineties. Mm -hmm. So, like I said in my little rap there, <laughs> I don't know if people even understood what I was saying. But it's been going for a quarter of a century. Quarter, and right? the way yeah. these performers and producers and promoters are able to still push that stuff as cutting edge is just amazing to me. It's like, you know, it's just yeah. incredible. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, like Tribe Called, Called Quest, they're fantastic. Yes, who have a real big anti-gay and... song, by the way, but... Oh really? Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but they're fantastic. I mean, I, I saw them I live and I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. You I, know why they lost all wear sunglasses? Why do they wear sunglasses? Why does because their Lasso audience is so white it actually blinds <laughs> them? <laughs> oh, it's just me, myself, and I. Oh wait a minute, maybe that's PM Dawn. I did the wrong joke. <laughs> no, PM Dawn wasn't really like hip hop though. 
uh, that stay less. I have the. I used to have PM Dawn uh, CD. Oh my god! Set it. Fit them. They're fabulous. Okay. Set a bliss on memory. I could not name a song. I just did. Set, Set a drift on. Set a drift on memory bliss. Yeah. And reality used to be a friend of mine. Yeah, that's the one I had. Yeah, yeah. I might even still have. I always story. love the stuff they sample. Like I don't want to hear me myself and I from De La Soul. I just want to hear Funkadelic, not just Knee Deep. And just I just want to hear the original song. So who has the uh, next record? Oh, that'd be me. <laughs> that'd be you. <laughs> so we're gonna listen to Kisses uh, Hotter Than Hell. Uh, no, actually, uh, I thought it'd be interesting yeah. to keep the trend going of listening to something current. And uh, I think I already know how Mike feels about this because uh, this album, because I think I, he, I saw it in one of his videos, but I think this would make mm-hmm. an interesting topic. And this is one of my, I haven't heard a lot, a whole lot of stuff from 2022, but what I have heard, this is definitely one of my favorite albums. And I'd be interested to see what everyone else thinks about this and even people in the wow, comments. Is, so let's check this is out super current. the Viagra oh. Boys and Cave oh, World, okay. which also has a nice cartoon. Yeah, it's a great um, cover. Great What's the title uh, of the cover. album again? Cave uh, World. World. Cave World. Cave World. I'm going to see them live in a couple of weeks. Oh, you know who's uh, Big Head Todd and the Monsters are playing next Saturday? They're still around. They're still around. Was also wow. my question. Wow. Broken hearted savior. I liked Big Head Todd when I was young. Yeah, okay. I. I that, that was. Fun Turn record. the wheel. All life is is really just a circle. Uh, but yeah, the Viagra Boys Cave World for All next right. time. I've heard a lot of people talk about nice. Viagra Boys, and I haven't really taken the time to listen to them. They've got a silly name. the uh, The album is very nice. timely. I'll say that it's a very timely, mm-hmm. and there I don't hear a lot of that from other people. So that's why I would be interested in people's take on that. Yeah. Oh wow. And yeah, that yeah, good times. <laughs> okay, and so that, that's not next episode. That's the following. That's the following Virginia. episode. So you have two weeks yeah. to listen to it over and over and over again if you want All to. Right. A lot of time. Because okay, next week we'll be concentrating on our contest and uh, talking about all the albums that we listen to that people either thought we would love or we would hate. I know that Guz69 thought I would hate Sepultura, which is, I don't. I know who they are. And. Yeah, had them in college. Chaos AD. Oh, refuse. I got resist. a lot of. I got a lot of videos to watch. Uh, yeah, I that's need, why we're doing I, a whole week so we. Can... Yeah, <laughs> I, I no, I, you know what? I think I've watched every entry, but I need to go back and like. I've watched them all. Refresh once, yes. my yeah. yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. only gone and listened to one of the recommendations. Um, because it was a specific song. I think that was the one that uh, uh, Record Talk mentioned. Yeah, he gave with, a song. He gave a specific song. Uh, so I didn't go look for oh, uh, yeah. an entire album of American football. Well, but, I've um, listened to Chris from Record Talk's album uh, four times, not to give anything away. but <laughs> I, I, I am very familiar with the record that uh, Chris from Record Talk uh, suggested. So, yeah. Yeah, and he's got a one of those things where you have to get the right version of it because there's two versions, and sometimes, mm. and I'm finding out from Discogs that sometimes they put the wrong version in the wrong sleep. It's like thanks a lot, Chris from Rocket Talk. Thanks, I needed that in my life. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Chris from Rocket Talk. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and thanks to everybody that entered our contest. Like I said, it's yeah, expired yeah. now, so oh, you, uh, you've you've already entered. If you wanted to enter, we had until you had until noon. Uh, well, today I don't know when you're watching this, but noon on Sunday, uh, January fifteenth was the uh, deadline Central Time uh, for that. Over. So thanks to everybody who uh, yeah, entered, or even everybody who wanted to enter. Anybody who thought about entering, thank you. We appreciate so your thoughts. Yes. Yep. And we're winding good. it down. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> at, one, at one hour. Yeah, and st- four minutes. Yeah, we started off with 1957 in such a rush of rock and roll that just wore us out. <laughs> I got the beat this. Let us know if we should split up the episodes with the uh, year in thing and the album reviews in the comments. Uh, and uh, appreciate all comments, actually. Uh, you can leave the I don't like Robert comments off. That's fine. <laughs> In his it opinion of albums, I think you should leave them. Oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. 
people are always defending the stuff albums I don't like. Well, I really like Harriet Wheeler's. It's like, oh my God, you probably like June Foray too. But uh, yeah, so. <laughs> and we're done. We are done. Thank you again for watching. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles. I'm Robert. F did we get? Oh, yeah, 1978 next time for the year. Yes, I'm Robert yes, Fithin, yes. along with Richard at Kelvin Wazoo, Craig's Vinyl Plethora, uh, Mike at Hubtoons. Thanks again for watching. We will see you again next yeah. time. Bye-bye. Yeah.